You might be new, but you still have something to offer the kingdom, the nations, and the world. Thank God that you're here. I thank God for Betty's prayer because I needed that. I don't know about y'all. I'm going to be real honest with you. I may only be up here for a half hour because I, I know y'all here and everything, but I'm going to just talk to me. I'm going to let God talk to me and minister to me. So I'm really not even thinking about y'all as I'm saying what I'm saying because I need help. I, I, I've been so blessed by the word that came yesterday and the word that what Bishop's been teaching on. Just, I mean, that fleeting life. And oh, my God, man. I, let me tell you something. The only thing that I'm really going to talk about right now is how God has been helping me look at myself right now and, and, and look and have to reconstruct, reconstruct how I've set up my prayer life, how I've set up my harvest, how I've set up the way I farm and plow. If you were here last night, you understand that. But if, but if you don't, what I mean is how I go about my life, how I serve God. Because you know what? If you don't, man, whew, when, 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 when we talk about breaking off that old man, we talk about breaking off that old man, we talking about Breaking the hardness. Well, how, how did he word that last night? Breaking the hard complacency that renders us to uselessness. When we talk about that, man, let me tell you something. You have to, you have to constantly renew your mind in this spiritual battle. You have to constantly renew your mind. You have to constantly renew your spirit. Turn to Romans 12 and 2 real quick. Actually, Romans 12 and 1, verse, verses 12, 1 and 2. Ugh, I can't talk. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Keep reading, Mom. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's your reasonable service. We're supposed to, by the, mercy, by the mercies of God, we are supposed to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy, so we have to re we have to look and change how we approach this thing, how we, how we do our day-to-day -day walk with God. I know for me, oh my God, man, I, the complacency, I, I had, I have, there's some things I've just had to shake off. So if you're going to call this anything tonight, I'm calling it, I'm going to put you in a position to succeed. I'm going to put you in a position to succeed. This really might be only 30 minutes. I promise you. I'm only going with what God told me to do. But you know something? I'm talking, and when I say that, I'm, that's not me, Marcus, telling you. That's God talking to us. I'm going to put you in a position to succeed. Okay? Because what, here's what ends up happening. We get so, every day, and I know Pastor Linda sees it, especially when she's teaching. Every day, we get so complacent. We get so in a rut and so routine in how we serve God and how we show up to the house of God and how we read scripture and how we just sit there and clap when, you know, only, you know, you know bishops say, is anybody that, you know, something like that. We, we, we get into a rut and we get in a routine and we don't really expect nothing. We don't really expect nothing, and we don't really walk as though we're expecting. I tell you, not that you don't believe God, but you don't believe God the way you're supposed to believe God. We don't believe that God will really do what we're asking him to do. We're so caught up in our rut. We're so caught up in our old man and our complacency that the things that we're asking God to do for us, we're still in a point of complacency where we can't even ignite and fire that thing up to make it happen. What did Bishop talk about last night? He said last night that the fire is your passion. Mm -hmm. The fire is your passion. We're supposed to have a passion about what we're at, about serving God. First and foremost, serving God, and then anything else, it lines up, it lines up after that. We're supposed to seek, us, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. We get so caught up in our day-to-day -day and our rigmarole and stuff like that that we forget that part about seeking God. We really don't seek the way we're supposed to. So the reason I say I'm going to put you in position to succeed, let me show y'all something real quick. This here, those of y'all that don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching football with the beef, right? And this here is a game plan. It's a defensive game plan. It's something that we break down every week. We give it to the players to get ready for the opponent that we, the opponent that we have coming up that week. Okay, and in this game plan, there's a number of pages. In the game plan, one of the things that we end up having is we have keys to victory. 
which basically breaks down alignment, assignment, technique, form, how you do things. We even have something in here with percentages. We have percentages. Like based on us watching film, we have percentages of how many times the opposition or the other team has ran a certain play. We break, like, so they, they, ran, they, they, they run to the left 13% of the time. They throw a, a, a post pass 15% of the time. They run sweep or what's called a jet option 25% of the time. We have percentages broken down. And I had to look at that. Look at the percentages in your life. There are percentages. <laughs> how many times? There are percentages that we're broken down in our life by. How many times has the enemy caught you slacking, lackadaisical in your prayer life? How many times, the percentage of times where you didn't handle a situation right, where your lack of faith made you panic? Then there's a breakdown for the percentage of times where you didn't believe God when it was time for you to move on a word. All right. Then there's a percentage of, you know, there's 13%, 14% of times, there's a number of times where a word came and you just, re you just you rejected it because you mad at the delivery or you mad at the man of God or the way he said it. And then there's the percentages of, oh, what else? Lack of prayer life. Lack of prayer life, that's a percentage right there. You ain't prayed enough. How many times have you been caught slipping with no prayer life and then something rolled up on you? How many times have you been caught? The percentages of how many times where you didn't even, you didn't even praise God. The percentages of times where you haven't even been in your word. Percentages. Percentages. You know, the enemy has us broken down by percentages. He knows exactly what we're going to do and when we're going to do it and how we're going to do it because we're complacent and we're just sitting back taking anything and every, whatever situation comes, I'll, I'll just roll with it. I'm trying to serve God, but I'm just going to roll with it. And we've gotten complacent. In that complacency, <laughs> man, like a prayer life. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Percentages. Remember, I'm, I'm talking to myself right now, so I, I hope you get some out of this, but I'm talking to myself. Real simple, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, real short verse. Mom, could you read that real quick? Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Man, how many times have I got caught with no prayer life? How many times have I got caught when there's, I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking as a priest, as a husband, as a man of God. How many times have I got caught, have I been caught on an hour where I've got to make a decision and my prayer life has not measured up to the opposition coming at me? Percentages. How many times is that, and it, it got that documented, it got a certain number of times. <laughs> he only prays when he's feeling good. He only prays if he's had a good night's sleep. How many... There, oh, the percentages of when you won't get up at 4 a.m. when God woke your butt up in the morning and said, give me some praise right now because you don't know what this day is going to bring. You don't know what the energy is bringing. But I do. I know the percentage of how the enemy wants to attack you. The enemy wants to attack you 17, you know what, 75% of the time when you're sleeping and your guard is down and your prayer life ain't up on it and you mad at a saint or you mad at the man of God or you mad at Pastor Linda or you mad at whoever or you just got a funky attitude, 75% of the time by the breakdown, that's when the enemy hits you. So I'm trying to get ahead of that and give you a prayer life at 4 in the morning. I'm trying to get you to be ahead of when the enemy hits you. I'm trying to put you in a position to succeed. Lack of prayer life. What else? Okay, we got some more percentages. We're not done with the percentages. Lack of faith is one of them I mentioned, right? Turn to Romans 10, verses 14 through 17. Percentages. You know, you got to know your opposition. Game plan. See, God wants us to succeed. He puts us in position to succeed. What are you going to do with the opportunity and the day that he gave you? How do you maximize your day? Percent, t turn to that, Ma. Okay. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Uh-huh. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? You barely come to church, so you ain't heard a word. Faith comes, by, come, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You're barely here. You'll find anything, any reason not to come. 
if you can if you can sandwich it to where you want to you want to oh, well you know I know Bishop's gonna be on me today and I just I just don't know oh, it's been a long day I don't know if I feel like hearing that I, I don't know if I feel like hearing that today I know Pastor Linda gonna be going in oh man or if it's Sunday oh man I know we're gonna have a test you'll find reasons you'll you'll put anything up against well I'll just I'll just put this under the blanket of responsibility and I won't show up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in that percentage, you're getting caught. You're getting caught. Every bit of that, understand something. All of that's coming under the blanket of complacency. There's a game plan for that. Because you got to bet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you know something? God is so aware of our bad habits. He's so aware of our bad habits. Because he knows the percentages. See, this is my breakdown. I'm looking at Marcus right now. Because he knows how, Mar how, how lackadaisical Marcus can get in his prayer life, well, I got to get you at an off time. I got to get you at 3 in the morning, try to get you up for prayer. I got to make you stop the car in the middle of the street. Uh, just give me some praise right now. I just, I just want to see if you're going to be obedient to that. You know what? Go, go encourage that person. I don't even know them, God. I just want to see if you're going to be. Because you need a better prayer life for what you're going up against. The stuff you're asking me for, it requires more. The stuff you're asking me for requires more. You're giving me a haphazard walk, but you're asking for gigantic prayer warrior things. And I can't have that. Have you looked at the blueprint? Have you looked at the game plan? Do you understand who's fighting you? Have you broken down the percentages? 75% of the time, you're lazy. You're lazy. You're asking for homes, you're asking for new, you're asking for, for financial favor, but you won't do the work. You won't do the research. You're asking to go to Paris. Have you even researched your ticket? Teach. You're asking for a new car. Do you even know the make and models? Have you talked to Pastor KT? Have you talked to Bishop or Brian? They know more about cars than anybody. Have you researched? Have you done any work? See, we can chalk that under se that 75% of your laziness in your walk with God. I'm talking to me. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to me. <laughs> Asking God for something, but you have been so lackadaisical. You know, that's why, that's why it was a blessing for us to hear Betty praise God. When Betty comes, I'm telling y'all, man, if, if nothing else, if nothing else, if you can get to the house of God early enough, so you can hear prayer go up so it can set the atmosphere for what you hear. So it gives you an opportunity to catch up on your percentages. So if you ain't praise God all day, this gives you an opportunity. Well, you know what? Before Pastor Linda or Bishop or whoever comes down, I need about 15 minutes, God, just to say, God, I thank you. I ain't said it all day. I've been hustling and bustling, worrying about kids, worrying about work, worrying about bills. I ain't say, God, I just want to take this time right now. I don't care. I only got a few minutes before you start feeding us, God, but I, this is a good enough time for me to take it advantage and say God I thank you don't get caught up don't get caught up don't get caught by not having a prayer life because see if you understand something about your opponent he likes to rush he likes to rush you know what that means that means he comes straight up the gut with it he likes to run what we call a dive in football he likes to rush you overwhelmed and when you're complacent when you're complacent, you don't see the rush. You're not ready for the rush. If you've ever, I, I, I got a line, I got, I got this linebacker that I coach. And apparently he was the defensive, okay, he was the runner up to defensive player of the year in the league last year. Led the league, the, the indoor league, not the NFL, the indoor league. He led the indoor league in tackles. I didn't know that when I started working with him, nor did I care. He knows me real. I mean, he, he's like, <laughs> if you ask him right now, matter of fact, they lifting tonight. After I get done here, I'm going to go check in on him because he's like, who's Crawford? Ain't no, because I jump on his case. I jump on his case because I see where I, I, I see some I see a lack of consistency. I see some areas where his form is real bad. So let me let me skip ahead. Let me tell you, there's a couple of things. There's three things. There's four things that I tell him. Number one, no hesitation. Number two, attack the dive. Number three, don't just cover space, because he's a linebacker. Don't just cover space. Take the enemy out. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then number four, impose your will. Okay, those are the four things I tell my linebacker. You don't have to write them down if you want to. I know it's football terminology, but I'm going to flip it here, okay? The first thing I tell him is no hesitation. 
No hesitation. So what that means is if he's a linebacker and he's sitting in the middle of the field, he has to be balanced. Okay? He can't be sitting back on his heels. He can't be sitting too high. Because when the hole opens up, he's not ready. and He can't, he can't get there. He can't get there in time. The line, the, by that time, the running back's already through the hole, right. and he's already doing whatever he's going to want to do. Yep. You can't sit back on your heels in this walk with God. You can't sit back on your heels. <laughs> if you sit back on your heels, by the time the enemy gets up on you and does what he wants to do, you are in no position to stop him. He's already free and loose in the, in the secondary. He's already running free and loose, running rampant in your life. Now your bills are a mess. Your finances are a mess. You got to get a jump on that devil with your praise. You got to get a jump on that devil with your worship. You got to get a jump on that devil with your words, speaking words, speaking something every day over yourself, your loved ones, your kids. You can't let him run free in the secondary. But you're sitting back on your heels, so you hesitated. Well, why are you back on your heels? That's bad form. Your butt's all up. You can't, man, you can't run like that. Get your butt down. Get your butt. I'm trying to put you in position so you can make plays, man. I'm trying to put you. God's, that's what God's saying to us. Nate, I'm trying to put you in position to make plays. We have a saying. We, and, then, and then we grade the players. Then we grade the players. We have a zero through three grade. Zero, one, two, and three. That's how we grade them. A three means, let me go the opposite way. A zero means you ain't did nothing right. <laughs> you, ain't do, <laughs> you ain't do nothing right. You ain't missed your assignment. <laughs> you missed your alignment. <laughs> you missed the tackle. <laughs> you ain't do nothing right. You got a zero. So you out of position. At the running place here, you ain't even reading the keys. You're not even where you're supposed to be. So you're out of position. <laughs> You don't know the assignment because if you knew the assignment, you would have read what was coming and you would have already. So that's two down. Okay, well, let's at least see if you made the tackle. Nope, you ain't even nowhere near. You're so far out. Oh, Jesus, you're so far out of your child's life. It's too late for you almost to pray for him. You got to hope that somebody else, the safety or the saint of God can come up and assist you with the tackle because you're that far removed from what's going on in your kid's life. Oh, that's good. It's a team. It's a team. It's a brotherhood. So you, you, you got to hope another saint's there that they, they can come up and help you and assist with that tackle. Because you are you out of the play. You over here getting blocked by a fat lineman. You got a fat spirit on you. A fat lackadaisical spirit where your butt just can't get up. You can't get your behind out the bed to pray. You can't get your behind up to, to believe God. You can't get your behind up to fill out no paperwork for the, for, to, have, to apply for the house you want or the job you want. You can't get your fat butt up to go look at some better jobs. You get, that fat line, he just, that spirit just got you. He all up in here. And they like to grab inside too. So you can't do nothing. You can't, you can't fight him off. You got to wait for the bell, the, for the whistle to blow and the play to end. So you need mercy. <laughs> you need mercy. You hoping God, you hoping God, God, hurry up and blow this whistle. Get this. Oh, I, you know what? I just, I see my techniques wrong. I see I approach the house of God wrong. I see I approach the man of God wrong. I see I approach the woman of God wrong. I approach the saints of God wrong. Hurry up and blow this whistle, God, so I can reset, break myself down and get in alignment. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Beautiful. So that's a zero. You ain't do nothing right. <laughs> that's a zero. And then there's a one grade, Mom. There's a one. You weren't where you were supposed to be. You didn't read it right. So you don't say the right thing to people, Tina. <laughs> you got the wrong attitude. <laughs> You show up anytime you want to the house of God, 8 o'clock, 7.45, 10 o'clock service. It's like 11.20, here you come because you had to go get something to eat because you was hungry during Sunday school. You ain't where you're supposed to be. God has rooted you here. Understand why you're here. God has rooted you here. If your name is, if you are here in this house of God, God has rooted you here. There's no mistake. God is not schizophrenic. He knows who he called and he knows who he placed in Grace Apostolic. Don't be schizophrenic with your assignment. We could take your name off that locker and put somebody, we can call somebody else up and bring them in for a tryout. And their zero won't be like your zero because you know better. I don't know why I said that, but anyway. So a one, you weren't in the right place. 
you missed the assignment, but at least you made the tackle. You might have showed up with a bad attitude. And you might not be doing, any, doing everything right that you want to, but at least you know if I can make it to the house of God, yeah. if I can just get through those doors, I just, all I want to do is I just want to get on the altar. I know I'm funky. I know I, I know I whizzed by my brother and sister when they were trying to say something to me. I know, I, was, I know I'm funky, but God, if I can just get to the altar so I can just reset and get this thing right. Okay, we'll give you a one. That'll work. Effort, we'll give you a one. But remember what I said, we, we, we put you in a position to succeed. So then there's the two grade. And the two means that you made the play that you were supposed to make. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. Good job. You made the play that was designed for you. So in other words, you're in position. You're always here in the house of God. You're, you're praying. You believe God. You're in position. The enemy attacks, you met it, stopped him right here. You did exactly what you're supposed to do. Good job. That's a, that's a two. You did exactly. What did we just read? Your reasonable service? Is that, what you, is that what you read in Romans? You want credit for being a saint of God, but that's just your reasonable service. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Hey, God bless you. There's more. You see what I'm getting at? You see how complacency is set in? Because you'll look at yourself weeks and months and years. I've been in the house of God. I've been serving. You'll get caught up like that. I know. I did. You'll get caught up like that. You'll get complacent. And so then when God is doing a new move, a new thing like his song says, and you're really asking God, don't do it without me. Well, I'm trying not to, but you're real complacent. You did what you're supposed to do there, but I'm doing something new. You might want to catch up. You might want to catch up. You might want to catch up. I, no, I feel you. I got you. You are a saint of God. You are who you say you are. You do have a prayer life. You do believe me. But now, take it beyond that. Reap all. I'm putting you in a position to succeed. So if you just make the play that's there, that's not succeeding. You're just doing reasonable service. That's not success. <laughs> success is a three grade. You're where you're supposed to be. You're in the proper alignment, which means you're balanced. You got a prayer life. You worship God. You read. You treat the saints with love. You truly love. You work on yourself. You're right where you're supposed to be. But then what happens is when that enemy shows up because you read the assignment, okay, the tackle blocked down, so the only place he can come is right here. I step to that hole. Not only did I meet that devil with my praise, not only did I meet that devil with my worship, not only did I meet him with studying and word, speaking word, I caused a fumble. Whatever the enemy planned for my family, whatever the enemy planned for my life, not only did I reverse it, we got the ball back. He tried to destroy something in my family. Not only did we stop that, we took that and we bought some new property. We took that and we extended the blessing beyond where it was supposed to be. We didn't just stop with the status quo of what, that's what the man of God has least, uh, that's what's been unleashed in Grace Apostolic, if you don't know. Right. <laughs> there's some ones in here, there's some twos in here, there's some zeros in here, and then there's some threes. And you don't get mad at the three. That's right. Don't get mad at the three. If anything, you should be inspired. I'm gonna get a three grade. I'm gonna get a three grade. I thank God for the two. Thank you. That's great, coach. That's great, God. I'm, I appreciate I'm, I'm, I'm glad about my two. Don't get it wrong. I'm glad about my two, but I need a three. I've been trusting you and walking with you too long to just be stagnated in the same spot. I need a three, God. You know what? I got to take my faith beyond this. I see the situation. I see what came up. God, I'm going to believe you beyond that. I'm not going to take the status quo. Whatever the enemy presents me with, not only am I going to fight it, I'm going to run past that and get a blessing on top of it. <laughs> I'll do what the enemy don't think I'll do. Not only will I speak to that person, I'll baptize somebody. Not only will I speak to that soul, I'll bring their whole family over for dinner. Not only will I... Come on, that's good, teacher. Come on, man. I want a three. Yes. I don't need a two. I've got years of two. And pretty soon, if I keep doing years of two, that two will start looking like a one to a real coach. And so then they'll turn the heat up. Got to turn the heat up. You've been doing that. You've been in this lane a real long time. I'm good with that. But now I'm over here. Let's see you make the maneuver to change over. Let's see.
see you make that move to get over here where I'm at. Let's see you follow the movement of God now. Follow where my spirit is going. And you got to be quick about it. You got to move at the unction of the Holy Ghost. Zavi does not just quote that. That is for real a mandate for us, y'all. That is a mandate. We have to move at the speed of the kingdom. When you see God move, get your hips low, rip through that, get there. Get there. Get there. Meet the enemy in the backfield. Don't let him get to the line of scrimmage. Meet him in the backfield. Rip, move, tackle. Stop him right where he was. Come on now. And if you're bad, get the ball. <laughs> if you really trust God, get the ball. Get the ball back. Get back your dreams. Get back what he said was shut down. You've been holding on to something since you was 30 years old, and now because you're 45, 46, 47, you think it's too late for that. And God said, get the ball back. Get the ball back. Don't you dare sit there on all I gave you, all that ability, all that God-given talent. Get the ball back. Don't just stay in that situation. Get the ball back. Commit a turnover. Make them think twice about running that play again. Make them think we got to come up with a whole nother game plan. We got to come up with a whole nother game plan for Pastor Linda. We got to come up with a whole nother game plan for that saint. We got to come up with something different from Queenie. That's just not working. We can't just rush her up the middle because she's, she sees it coming. She's ahead of her time. That's why she gets the contract. <laughs> God's saying, I'm trying to, I put you in a position to succeed. You are in a position to succeed. All you got to do is make plays. There is no losing. We've done all the work for you. We've given you the breakdown. Where my paper go? We've given you the breakdown. We told you the percentages. You know how the enemy's going to come after you. You know he's going to take advantage of your complacency. You know he's going to take advantage of your fear. Yes. You know he's going to take advantage of the fact that you're angry. You know he's going to take advantage of the fact that you're bitter. Why do you think I'm waking you up so early to talk to you, to get you ready so you can fight? I want the ball back. That's the way a coach talks. I want the ball back. Give me the ball back. Right. Woo. Come on, man. So here goes this kid who's thinking he was all, you know, all league last year. But God, but God, what about what I've been doing for you? Nah, get your hips down. Yo, man. So every day I kill him. I dog him to the point where he's like, like, I'm like, they're like, well, you know who that is, don't you? No, I don't know. I don't care. Look at his positioning. That's the man of God, by the way. <laughs> that's, the, that's the man of God. That's the angel of the church's role in our lives. You don't see who he, don't you know who he, don't you know who he is? No, I don't care who that is. His form is bad. His attitude is bad. His, his technique is bad. He's not moving at the unction of the Holy Ghost. So I have to stay on him. I'm not happy with him presenting me with a two. Not with what's been poured into him. You said he was league MVP last year. Well, what's he supposed to be this year? We're supposed to win a championship. I'm not satisfied with that. God said, I'm not satisfied. I see your effort. That's good. Now move over here where I'm at. You got to take it to the next level, y'all. We got to take it to the next level. Amen. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me talk a little bit because I talked about the no hesitation, and I talked about the attacking the dive, and I've covered don't just cover space. You got to take the enemy out. I covered that. Let me talk a little bit more about imposing your will. Imposing your will. Imposing your will. Do you not know, do you not understand, saying of God, every time you open your mouth, <laughs> every time you open your mouth, you are imposing your will. Every time you open your mouth with praise, not, not, not just open your mouth, I'm talking about you have to, you have to speak it, you got to speak it with such a conviction that if it don't happen by tomorrow, you like, well, hey, God, you know what? Well, that's, <laughs> you, there has to be a conviction, that passion that Bishop talked about last night, that fire, and that's why I thank God for prayer. Boy, Betty, I thank God for you because that fire, my, my, my fire, you know, I, I, I had to look because I'm, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm, be, I'm, I'm real honest with y'all, or I, I try to be, I'm real, real honest with you. 
I got a bunch of, I'm looking at my stuff, I'm like, okay, I got a one, <laughs> got another one, I got a two, and so for so long, I've wanted credit for that one. Because I thought it was a great effort. It wasn't just a tackle I made, it was a super tackle. <laughs> it was an awesome tackle. Did you not see it? He was clear over there by day day. And with one arm, I leaped in. That's when God uses you. Mm -hmm. But it was a one. <laughs> but God, but God, but God, I, I'm, I'm faithful on the usher board. God, I'm faithful when I sing with the praise team. I'm faithful when I have to fill in when the man of God says, it's a one. It's a one. I'm not even going to give you a two on that. That's a one. That's a one. The only thing you did right was you were obedient and you filled in when you were supposed to. Your attitude prior to that was funky. Matter of fact, you're shocked you even got the phone call because I'm like, dang, I was just getting, but if he'd have known what I was just thinking, if he'd have known what my mind was just... <laughs> you shocked you even get the call. Whereas a three is like, hey, I'm here to serve. I'm, it's, it's, uh, you know, what else can I do? <laughs> I ain't thinking about teaching because I'm. So, there's so much other stuff. There's people out there I need to help. There's, there's, I, I, I finally realized, you know, for the longest time, I've been sitting here looking at this this whole Omaha beef thing, and I'm glad about it. I thank God, and you know, you know, it's, it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It's what I love to do, if you know me, it's what I love to do. But I kind of had it look, you know, looked at it a little wrong, a little differently. I finally now realize that, man, as much as I'm around these young men. And as much as they say that they learn from me or because I get on their case, they I mean, I'm just poor. I hate to say his name because if he actually listens to the podcast, whatever, Jesse. And so if, Je <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so if Jesse is listening to the podcast or whatnot, I, I ride him so hard. And I mean, he's like it's like it's a love hate relationship. He loves me when we're done. He hates me while we're doing it. But he realizes the good in it. And I finally realized, man, if I don't get my, the least I can do my reasonable service. My reasonable service, I got to get one of them young men in the sanctuary. Not one of them. I got to get half that because they listen. They listen. They listen to me. And I've tried to, you know, you try to, anybody, anybody relate with this, you, you try to fit into a role. You try to fit into a role. I don't want to ruffle feathers, at least not yet. <laughs> you try to fit into a role. What, maybe, it's, maybe it's not a football team for you, but whatever your role is in your life, you try to fit into a role. You might be fitting in a role at your job. God Ben told you to open your business up, but you're trying to fit into a role. And so then you'll get to ponder, well, why am I here? God, what am I doing here? Man, if I don't bring one of these young men to the sanctuary, that's, if I don't bring some, not one, some of them young men. Matter of fact, Coco was going to cook for uh, the team before our first game, and then we had to cancel it just because, you, you know, just some, well, we didn't have money for all of y'all next week. But, but, well, I mean, we had enough, but not as much as we would want. I mean, the team's pretty right. big, and, you know, I don't know. They all look like Todd. Now, can you imagine Todd? <laughs> like 13 Todds coming in your house. <laughs> That's a lot of you need a lot of burgers, you know what I'm talking about? You need a lot of burgers, you know what I mean? You need a lot of, you need burgers, steak, you need a lot of, you can't just, it wasn't like the Super Bowl party, y'all, for, for those, those of y'all, it wasn't like the Super Bowl. You need a lot of beef, y'all ate reasonable. These dudes, these dudes, put it like this, we got, man, if I told y'all how many vouchers they had to some of the restaurants in the town, y'all be like, so, he, he, where he at? Where, it's, 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 so, I'm, I'm not going to say that on the mic. Like vouchers for each restaurant. That is crazy. So, you know, because we're housing them. Anyway. But my reasonable service is because of the light, and, and, and it makes me, it, it holds me accountable. Because of the light in my life, I got to get some of these young men in here. I might be holding up one of my sister's husbands. Get him in here. Come on now. <laughs> Bring him in not really where I was going with it, but, but no, no, but do you understand what I'm saying? Three thinking, three mentality is, if I'm around anybody long enough, the presence of God, the, the, the power of God should emanate off who I am and what I say, and it should make that soul like, hey, so you're different from all the other coaches. Yeah, but let me tell you why. It ain't me. It's, you see what I'm saying? Right. That's so if it. I don't do that, ain't no sense in me coaching. That's right. I finally got that part. 
Not that I, don't, don't get it wrong. I'm not saying I would have went and, but you know how it is. Even, you're, you're like that probably at your job now, which lets you know your job is a one. <laughs> you know, I'm just being honest. It lets you know your job is a one. You're probably like that at your job now. I'm going to come. I'm going to do my work. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to be nice to people. If people speak, I'm going to speak back. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And God bless you. Have a great day. Don't involve me in anything. I just want to, you know, you know, just want to do my thing. God bless you. All right. <laughs> Amen. But then we get here, boy. We... <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. If I'd have stayed in Lincoln, if I'd have stayed down there in Lincoln, I'd have did my thing. I'd have been cool. Hey, Coach Riley. And, you know, we're like, shut up. You know how they did my look? Oh, that's an inside joke. That's an inside joke. I can't tell y'all about it. Coach Riley, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all. He has the highest, he's, he talks like Reagan and George Bush at the same time. He got mad at the team. Went, Shut up! <laughs> and did his hands like this, like in a bill. Like, man, you're in a circle full of Negroes. You can't, anyway. So, okay, sidebar. Sorry, that was a complete side. Had nothing to do with the story. So, my point, but if I'd have stayed, <laughs> if I'd have stayed down in Lincoln, if I'd have stayed down in Lincoln, I'd have offered, Jesus, I'd offer God a two life, maybe a one. I'd offer God a two, maybe a one, because I wouldn't have influenced the young men enough. I, it, I wouldn't have went down there with the mandate and the purpose, the legacy or the, 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 the arrogancy of purpose that, that Day Day and Davion and Lexi, I wouldn't have went down there to say, you know what, I'm going to have this whole team baptized by the next that wasn't my mindset. My mindset was, hey, great, a, a door is open and this is an opportunity. Now I'm starting to see why I've had to. That's real. Now I'm starting to see why some of the stuff happened. So many, man, if I'd have told y'all some of the stuff that happened while I was up in Lincoln, like, dude, really? Are you guys, you guys that jealous? Man, you ain't tripping. Ever. No, you're offering me a two and I need a three. Because what I just did to even open this door, I saw the rush and I opened this, I opened this thing up for you to make a play. And you gonna offer me a two? You can come on back then. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> come on back. You don't need to be down there. Not, not giving a two. I need a three. I deserve because this was a three effort for me to put you here. I need a three. I don't need a two. A two for those of y'all that just came in. A two is your reasonable service. No more, no less. A one is. <laughs> We're talking about grading in football. One is you did one thing right. You screwed up a bunch of other stuff. You got one thing. At least you, hey, you made it to the house of God. So that's why I'm on that team. You have to look back to why. Why has God put you in the position that you're in right now? What's holding up the progress for you to get to where you want to go? Are you still offering a God a two? Are you offering God a two when he's requiring a three? When we grade out the percentages of how much faith that you exhibit at your job, when we look at the chart, I keep losing my paper. When we grade out the percentages, when God, not we, when God grades out your percentages, what's he going to say? Well, 16% of the time, you say God bless you to somebody. 5% of the time, you may offer prayer. That's if somebody tells you something horrific. No, no, because we're, no, for real. Like right now, if somebody, if, if you heard at your job that somebody passed, you're going to go into prayer. But just being in tune with the spirit of God, okay, God, who am I supposed to intersect with? What did you send me here for? Because I'm not in this position just for me. I'm here for the kingdom. That's getting the interception. That's stealing the ball back. That's getting the ball back. What Carl did for Joe Nate, that's getting the ball back. Yes. That's a three. You're going above and beyond what we're asking you to do. Come on. What God's expecting. God, who can I impact? Who am I here to impact? I'm not just here at the school to teach. Who am I impacting? Right. Even if I don't want to be here, if I, I'm, I'm still here, so who am I supposed to impact? Right. What blessing is going to use me as the conduit to get to where they're supposed to be? What, saint of God, what soul is going to come? Yeah. It's a different way of looking at it. It makes you, it makes you, makes you go back to the, to the film room and study, study film and, and game detail a little bit differently. Makes you study game detail a little bit differently. I'm talking to myself. I owe God a three. For the way he's delivered me, for the things he's done in my life, when I broke stuff, Kayoka, not when somebody else broke it for me, when I broke stuff, 
when I mess things up, when I almost mess things up in my household, when I almost ruined my family and my marriage, when I almost messed up money, when I got a car repossessed, when I, for God lifting us back up to the point now where we're in a house, where we're, where I'm doing what I want to do, I'm doing, I'm working back in the career field that I want to be in. I owe God, I don't owe God a two. That's not a two effort. He didn't deliver you with a two. You know, a two is you get shot, he heals you. That's a two. <laughs> you fall down, stub your toe, he gives you a Band-Aid. That's a two. And for that, you do need to praise him. Don't get it twisted. You need to praise him for that. But I'm talking about that three. You know what that three is in your life. I'm talking about when you jacked your stuff up. No outside forces. It was all you. It was all internal. You jacked yourself up, and God went above and beyond to get you back to the point where what I see sitting before me now, to see the saint of God, the powerful saints of God, I see You owe God a three. You owe God a three. That should ignite a three praise right now in your seat, if you're honest. See, that's another percentage. 10% of the time, you're being honest. Only 10% you really look at yourself and say, you know what, God, if you had not done that, I didn't make the right move, I wasn't where I was supposed to be, I was not in alignment with your will, I couldn't even make the play. There were times you couldn't even utter a praise. You gotta go back to that time. If you ever wanna get to a three, you gotta go back to watching your own game film and say, you know what, God, if you had not delivered me here, make no mistake about this. Make no mistake about it. It was the hand of God. I completely ruined my life. Ruined it, God. And had you not, and see, when you get to thinking about that, Lana, when that, when, when that, when that, when that testimony gets to rolling around you in your head, then that's where that fire comes back. That fire starts getting ignited. You know what? I'm getting tired of going back and looking at the same play. Nah, nah, uh-uh, uh Wrong attitude there, nah, nah, uh-uh. No praise there, oh, look at this. Oh, look at that, no prayer life. Oh, look at that. Not speaking to people. Oh, look at me. I ought to be ashamed of myself. Makes you want to throw down the remote. You don't even want to study no more. God, let me praise you now. I don't even want to, I don't even want to study this film no more. I'm going to go to the weight room or the altar or the sanctuary and start working right now. Right now. There's no time to wait. Kaoka, there's no time to wait. There's nothing like today. There's nothing like the grace and the mercy God's given today. When I'm in the house of God, I take full advantage of it. I take full advantage of it. He's going to get a three effort out of me from here on out. And I'm going to grade myself. I'm going to grade myself when I'm not giving that three effort. When I'm not giving that three effort. Oh, no. Uh-uh. I'm not going to blame nobody. I'm not going to call somebody and run down a whole list of reasons why I'm not where I'm supposed to be. No, I'm going to get it together. I'm going to come before God for myself. I'm going to get on that altar. I'm going to lay it all out. I don't care who hears me crying out. I don't care who sees it. I'm going to lay it all out. Because at the end of the day, they ain't my coach. You my coach. I'm playing for you. God, you gave me this life. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they know. I don't care what game they came to and saw me make that mistake. That's what God's requiring of us, y'all. When Day Day sings that song, matter of fact, Day Day, play that, please. Get on there and play that now. Play that now. Play that now. That's your song. Time out, oh Jesus, okay. time out for you thinking that when he plays that song, he's only talking about him, and he's only playing it for him and Lexi. What about you? What about you? Somebody's sitting, oh God, I feel that. Somebody's sitting there thinking every time he plays that song, it's beautiful, it's lovely, but that's for them. I've messed up too much, I've done too much, that ain't for me. The devil is a lie. Get up here and get your three. Get up here and give God everything. You lay it out.